How to avoid Nigeria's upcoming secession crisis? The old conventional wisdom is that only the North can secede from Nigeria without a finger of opposition raised or a shot fired to stop it. That conventional wisdom is so yesterday. There has been a paradigm shift. The only trouble is that the infamous Nigerian stakeholders have their heads still buried in the past. Writing in the New York Post the other day, Frank Buckley, the author of the new book, American Secession, outlined ways that parts of the United States could secede from the Union if the current fragmentation of the country is not reversed. Americans have never been more divided and were ripe for secession, he wrote. The bitterness, the gridlock, the growing tolerance of violence invite us to think that we'd be happier were we two different countries. In all the ways that matter, save for the naked force of law, we are already two nations. Here is one scenario that every political observer in America is worried about. The state of California, with its $3 trillion GDP, has the sixth largest economy in the world, could decide to leave the union. There are numerous reasons why California may want to leave. Some of California's areas of disagreement with the federal government in Washington, D.C. are approach to climate change, attitudes towards immigrants, and social issues like abortion rights and death penalty. Another scenario is that of the state of Texas. Texas has always had active secessionist movements since 1845, when it was annexed and forced to join the Union. As new generations of Texans are born, a fraction of them maintain the hope that at the right time, Texas will regain its autonomy as a lone star nation. Currently, Texas is in danger of falling into the hands of the blue blood American tribe called the Democrats. The Republican tribe, who have seen Texas as their fortress for decades, could decide to fight back to stop that tribal takeover of their land. And one nuclear option they could choose is to pull out of America. Some in Texas believe that there is a loophole in Texas annexation that could easily open the door for them to exit without a fight. In Frank Buckley's essay, How to Avoid America's Upcoming Secession Crisis, he argued that because the first secession movement in America was bloody and led to the death of over 750,000 people, it does not follow that the second one would be bloody. He suggested that it could follow a peaceful separation in line with the trend in Canada, UK, Spain, and other modern advanced nations. He stated that even though the pro-union US Supreme Court had ruled that the union was indissolvable when an overwhelming majority of voters of a state or group of states demand secession and insist on it, nothing could stop it. He acknowledged that sending U.S. troops in this day and age to attack another state or groups of states because they want to secede is something most presidents would not do. If a state like California wants to secede under a president like Trump, he could say to hell with them. With California out of the United States, Trump would handily win re-election. Buckley's solution to stop the impending crisis is to stop America's drift towards one-size-fits-all policies and embrace more federalism. If people in Alabama want to eat the deer that their car knocked down on the road, let them eat. If people in New York want to legalize marijuana, more smoke to their eyebrows. If people in Virginia want their governor to serve one term only or their legislators to be part-timers, others should say, good for them. Who is Washington, D.C. to tell them otherwise? 
back to Nigeria. The problem with Nigeria is simple and fundamental. The tribes and religions are already in place as the default status. What is needed to gradually bring these different competing personalities to the center in a seamless way was the kind of federalism that was negotiated in the 1950s, which led to Nigeria's independence in 1960. It is the very structure that went away with the coup of 1966 and the unitary government that successive military administrations put in place, including the 1999 constitution they handed over to us with the big fat lie that it came from we, the people. In 20 years of the fourth republic experiment, it has become clear to everyone that the constitution, the Nigerian foundation cannot carry the building, the Nigerian nation. I dare to tell this nation today that this is the problem. This constitution can never give us progress. This constitution can never give us peace. This constitution can never give us unity. And unfortunately, most of us in this National Assembly, we don't have the spine to face what we need to give this republic to our peace and progress. From Sharia to Amotekun, from Niger Delta militancy to Boko Haram insurgency, the Nigerian constitution has shown gross inadequacies. At one point, there was the hope that the faulty foundation could be reinforced without tearing down the whole structure. But even that hope is fading as more and more beams are cracking and the foundation is sinking, making any work on the building to look like mere patch patch. Simply put, the structural integrity of the Nigerian nation is now suspect. In the age of Brexit, the new conventional wisdom is that it is not only the North that can secede from Nigeria and no shot will be fired. A coordinated exit by consecutive wings of the country can leave the Union helpless in stopping it. Any attempt to forcefully prevent it may trigger a controlled demolition. The bombs are already in place under several wings of the Nigerian building. It is a matter of sinking the ignition. Those who have their eyes on the pro Biafrans are ignoring the groups who are ready with their constitutions, flags, national anthems, armies, and embassies. The people who believe that secession is the only solution to the failure of the Nigerian state have already moved on. They are not interested in state police as a compromise for security that the federal government cannot provide. They are not interested in devolving power as an antidote for unfairness of a mighty federal system where the whims of the president is a substitute for fairness policies like federal character. Those men and women are just sitting by, counting down when the secession would happen. Just as Frank Buckley wrote, not that secession is what I'd want. I recognize all the differences that divide us, but a better answer would be a greater tolerance for those differences in the form of renewed federalism or federalism on steroids, which I call home rule. It is the responsibility of those who still believe in one Nigeria to do something urgent, something concrete and something far reaching to drag Nigeria from the edges of approaching vortex of secession. To those who still believe in one Nigeria, the first thing they need is to be at the forefront, preaching in loud voices that for Nigeria to remain the same, it must change urgently. Surprisingly, the change is simple, home rule.
great news. Send Wave is expanding to Spain, Italy, and Ireland. No more excuses, my brothers and sisters. You can now enjoy the same free, secure, fast, easy, and trusted way that over 500,000 people in the US and the UK are using to send money home. Now, from December 3rd to December 10th, you can get 10 euros on top of your first transaction by using the promo code DOCTOR. After that, it is 5 euro. So rush to our app store and download SendWave.